You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. We've been rebuilding our boat on anchor for the last two months now, and collecting fresh water and rationing our supply has been a struggle from the very beginning. We are now relieved to say that the era of gas station water jugs and bumming showers off of friends is finally over. Last week, we just installed our brand new Seawater Pro water maker. And honestly, I don't know who's more excited. Sasha, so that she can finally have a decent shower, or me, so that Sasha can finally shave her legs. Regardless, we've overcome that hurdle and now we can channel our energy into the next project such as building out our kitchen and interior cabinets so we no longer have to cook on the floor. Time to frame out the kitchen. So I'm using some construction adhesive. It's not water-based. Ring-gate plywood left over from the floors. Now before we dive into the kitchen, there's something Roth needs to tell you guys about. I went to college to play foosball. <laughs> and although I never got to start, I worked my way up to second string quarterback for the University of Central Florida, where I walked out with a couple concussions and a four year degree that I never used. So I became a handyman and I slowly started learning all my trades through trial and error the hard way and taught myself through YouTube. And the reason I'm telling you this is for credibility because after eight years of grinding nonstop, I found myself with a contractor's license from the state of Florida where I specialized in designing and building custom kitchens and bathrooms. Now this may be one of the smallest kitchens I've ever done, but it's definitely the most difficult and doing it on anchor made it even harder. Sasha, tell them why. Well, the boat is constantly moving, so a level is pointless. We have to construct it in a way that it can withstand the twisting and movement of the boat. We're trying to put the largest appliances in the smallest of spaces for comfort, and most of it's getting built out of the limited amount of scrap wood we have left to make it look original to the rest of the boat. So after a week of drawing and thinking about it, here's what we came up with. Starting in the kitchen, you have the through hole that the sink's going to drain out of on the right, so the sink will go here. Next, it only makes sense if the cold beer is within arm's reach of the office, so we're going to put the fridge here. This means our gimbling stove and oven will be here in the center. However, who wants to wait 30 minutes to bake cookies when you can do it in 10? So we plan to replace the oven portion with an air fryer, and since no one sells this type of setup, we'll have to build a custom one. Now, to maximize our storage, we're going to make drawers everywhere we can. Hell, we're even going to take this cabinet door and turn it into two drawers, which is why we ordered a right-hand drain sink versus a center drain sink, because the center drain would have blocked us from installing these two drawers. Moving on to the upper cabinets. Whoever built these should be fired because there's a foot of wasted space behind them. So, we're going to rebuild the boxes, use the original doors, and mount them a little higher, which will give us a bigger backsplash and make it all look more aesthetically pleasing. Only issue is, these cabinet doors open downwards, which means we'll have to get a short faucet. Psych, that shit would be ugly. So let's take the big one, push it all the way over to the right, cut the cabinet door, and have this section mounted permanently, so if we ever need to open the cabinet, we swing the faucet out of the way, and voila. Looking at our office, we plan to build the ultimate editing desk, fixed with a custom three drawer cabinet in the center to organize our camera gear, two office chairs, two laptops, and to flex on our neighbors, we'll add two wall mounted monitors, which should also keep us motivated to work. Ralph, what are you doing? I'm watching Vikings. 
thanks to this week's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN provider which allows me to log into any IP address in the world and since Vikings isn't available to stream on Netflix in the United States, I just click on Poland here, log back into Netflix and voila, I've got every episode of Vikings available right here at my fingertips. And while Ruff is using it to binge his favorite TV shows, I'm using it for more important things like our finances. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. We carry all of our important documents on this laptop, and we're constantly working remotely, connecting to unsecured Wi-Fi networks at restaurants, marinas, coffee shops, hotels, you name it. When we use Surfshark as our VPN, it encrypts all of our online data, meaning that our personal information is always secure no matter what Wi-Fi we connect to. We can't thank Surfshark enough for sponsoring this video, and if you use the code SPIRITANIMAL in the link down below, then you get an extra three months of Surfshark for free. Now let's get back to building the kitchen. Okay, we got the drawing of the kitchen in the office. Now it's time to get to work. To start, we ripped down a piece of the leftover flooring and attached it to the wall. We squared it off with the floor, and this gave us a good start to attach the front of our cabinet to. Then we started to design and cut out the face frame of the sink cabinet out of the leftover scrap wood we had from when we tore down the wall. It was difficult to decide which pieces we wanted to use where because we were limited on the pre-finished facing. After that, we started tacking it together, and it took a while for us to figure out the sides of the cabinets because there's a ton of crazy cuts. dishes now. Sasha may be excited about using the sink, but this is only a temporary setup. Once we have everything tacked together in the exact place we want it, we'll have to take it all back apart so we can stain everything and finish it. However, seeing her excitement only goes to prove one thing. Living in these crazy conditions has really taught us not to take anything for granted. Even something as small as being able to wash our dishes in a kitchen sink. <laughs> so we have this sink installed, looking pretty. Countertops are over here right now. This is where we're going to install an air fryer and a stove top on top. Okay. So this is where the fridge is going to go. Has it all framed out now. We're going to set the countertops on and figure out where we need to cut that. Before we cut our countertop, we really have to figure out how our air fryer is going to gimbal. There's a lot of crazy measurements and angles that we have to take into account so we don't cut the countertop in the wrong place. Some of you are probably wondering what is a gimbling stove? Well, when you're sailing on a monohole, you're typically leaning over and sometimes a pretty good amount. A gimbling stove counteracts that lean and keeps your pots and pans from falling off when you're under sail or in a wavy anchorage. Now if you're on a catamaran, you can probably get away with just having pot holders since they don't heel over as far as a mono hole. We meant to get a lot of work done today on the kitchen, but it's been a bit of a gloomy day. Quite a bit of rain. You can see it's wet, but we're gonna try to make the most of it. We're currently figuring out the layout of our stove and air fryer box. We just have to figure out how it's gonna fit and gimbal 
before we can cut out the countertop. So, so we know that the air fryer is 21.4 wide. The height of it is 12.8. Our stove is four and five eighths high. The countertop is an inch and a half. Inch and a half minus four and five eighths is three and a eighth. This took a lot of planning out to do. We had to think about the width of the air fryer, the width of the plywood we were gonna use, the width of the brackets that were required to make this thing gimbal, the depth of the stove, and airflow to keep this thing ventilated. 22, with the air fryer is barely gonna squeeze in this thing. So we're gonna make it 22, or 21 and three quarter. Measure 10 times, cut once. That's the rule when you're cutting all your boards off site. We finally got all our measurements down and now it was time to go build this air fryer box. We're installing a new box, which means we have to find the gimbal point and figure out where we're going to cut the countertop. How are we figuring this out? We're going to have our countertop. It's going to look like it is built right in. Like it's there's not going to be much of a gap at all. Probably an eighth of an inch all the way around. And we were thinking, we were wondering how much of an overhang we're going to need because if the countertop is flush here, when this back swings up, we don't want it to hit the countertop. So you put that at your pivot point and bring it up to 30 degrees, which is right there. And so that line is about 30 degrees. So we're good right there. I'm gonna get to cutting. I'm sure that was difficult to follow. So here's a breakdown. From the research we did, it's recommended to have your gimbling stove gimbal at least 30 degrees. Some sailboats will lean more than that, but if our boat's leaning more than 30 degrees, we'd have a lot more to worry about. So we're gonna stick with 30. Now we want most of our weight down below so that our gimbal is very sturdy. So we're gonna center our bracket up near the top. Now we gotta check our clearance in the back. If we mount this thing too close to the back of the countertop, then when this thing gimbals, it's gonna hit the countertop before it reaches its 30 degree mark. So we figured if we extend this part of the countertop, then that allows us to close that gap in the back and still gives us plenty of room for this thing to gimbal and do its job. But after all the measuring we did, we found out that we really only need a quarter inch of overhang behind the air fryer, which gave us enough room to reach our 30 degree mark. The other thing we had to take into consideration is the space behind it and below it. When this thing tips to 30 degrees, you gotta make sure you have plenty of room on both of those areas so that it doesn't affect the way it gimbals. But we already accounted for all this when we tacked it together. We're measuring out all these cuts. So this is our countertop that's gonna go here. So we're cutting out all the spots and we're just doing all the math so we can take one trip up these stairs, make all the cuts, and one trip down. I like that plan. Yeah. This thing's heavy. Now that we got all the measurements on the board, it's time to take them outside and cut them. Once we had everything cut, we rounded over the edges with a quarter inch router bit, and then we took them inside to see if they fit. Oh my goodness. 
Okay, so we just got the new countertops in. <gasps> yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my god. <laughs> Rob, they look so beautiful. Okay, I say that about everything, but everything is gorgeous. I'm so excited. I could cry. My eyes are watering a little bit. We have to cut down this back edge here so that when it tilts, it doesn't hit right there. Cut an angle. And cut it at a slight angle. That way when it tilts down, it won't hit, but... Okay, but can we just take in how good this looks? I have to take a step back. Please. White full writ. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my god. I can't... Oh. Oh my goodness, I am, yes, yes. Raph, our kitchen looks amazing. It's gonna look sexy. Our kitchen is gonna be the kitchen everyone wants. 100%. Oh, What'd you my... think it was gonna be? Well, I knew it was gonna be that, but I just, <laughs> but seeing it come into like real life, I just can't, oh my goodness. It's I love it. It's good, looking so good. I like the way it just sits in here, like everything is just one continuous. Yeah, before we had like four inch spaces in between our stove and like a 10 inch space back here. So there was so much wasted space and just stuff could fall in. And I really wanted, originally we were just going to build this box, but then I thought about how putting a flush countertop might look really sexy which it does it turns out great i don't i haven't seen this on any boats personally and we cut it out of the same piece of wood so all you can see the grain how everything just continues continues perfectly streamline we were so excited about the way these countertops were starting to come together but now it was time to finish them and there's proper steps you must take because your countertops are only going to look as nice as the finished product. All right, we've got our countertops cut out. In order to finish them, you want to follow these steps. First thing you do is sand them. You want to sand every part of it very evenly. In fact, you might even want to go with a higher grit on the ends than you do with the top. If you want the stain to penetrate and get really dark, then you want a rougher sandpaper. So something like 120, you're gonna get a lot deeper stain than you would if you would sand this with 220. Now, before we stain this, take some pre-stain wood conditioner. Now you can put this on plywood and stuff, but if you put this on, you're not gonna get, if you're, if you're going for something dark, you're not gonna get it very dark. However, I always put this on my end grains. So right here on all these edges. The reason why you do this is because the ingrain absorbs stain very fast and very quickly. It's a really thirsty part of the wood. So you put a layer of pre-stain conditioner on your ingrain and that way you can get a more consistent stain coming around the edges. For example, imagine you have a book and you spill some water on top of the book. It's an open book, you spill it on the first page. That water, if you wipe it off real quick, it's not gonna make it to all those bottom pages. If you take that book and it's sideways and you spill some water, it sucks it in so like all those pages are gonna be wet. That's the same with this wood here. So this isn't gonna absorb stain as much as this ingrain. If not, you're gonna have a nice stain here and it's gonna be extremely dark on these edges. And you can see how it just soaks it right up. Make sure and get that little top lip. As soon as you start seeing the ingrains, just come up a hair right there. Get that little edge, cause that edge will get real dark if you don't. We finished sealing the countertop, cut out the hole for the sink, and then prepared ourselves for the days to come. Load in the dinghy, the flat dinghy up with wood. It doesn't seem to like to hold any air. Loading this truck up full of tons of scrap wood, random tools, and even debris off the side of the road that we thought we were going to use for the rebuild was part of our daily routine of what seemed to be a never ending chapter of our lives. Of course, this is not something we filmed because it was so monotonous. But if you can only imagine all of the laundry, groceries, parts from the hardware store, gas for the generator and the dinghy, on top of all the scrap wood and power tools, 
It felt like we spent more time loading and unloading the truck in the dinghy than the amount of time we spent rebuilding our boat. Let's ride. Let's ride. These next three days were extremely important for us. We had to get a ton of work done because the boat was a disaster and Sasha was leaving to go visit her family in the Netherlands for an entire week. So we wanted to finish as much as we could so I wasn't left with a thousand projects to finish on my own. So this is the butcher block we got from Home Depot. We use it in our kitchen. We're also gonna use it in our office space for our desk as well as the three countertops for our bathrooms and a little island section in the kitchen as well. Bugs have been attacking us. We have our workstation going and Brett and Jade are here to do some cabinets as well. We already tacked all our stuff together. Big mess, but we do a good job cleaning it up. Ooh, and Raph made a new filing cabinet for laptops. Little master This rebuild is kicking our butts, but thanks to your guys' support, you're really keeping us motivated to keep cranking away so we can get back out there on the water. Yes, thank you so much to each and every one of our patrons, and especially our upper tier patrons, which get a plaque on the spirit animal. If it wasn't for you guys, we would seriously not be doing this. And if Patron isn't for you guys, you can always like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. That really helps us out a lot. See you guys next week.